Hello everyone, and welcome to another cast of the Nexus Gaming Series, Season 16. Uh, today I have the lovely Joe Tack as our co-caster. Uh, good morning. <laughs> good morning! <laughs> 7.30 at night, good morning! Uh, right. Probably a lot of like people watching at like 10.30. <laughs> but anyways, uh, we're casting Div D West again. Uh, lots of familiar faces on both of these teams for us. Uh, we've got Cosmos versus Artemis. Um, and we've got uh, some bands that we won't see them playing on. That's Alterac Pass, Tomb of the Spider Queen, Rex's Holdout, and Garden of Terror. First map we're looking at is Cursed Hollow. A big map. So it'll be interesting to see how these teams rotate and just coordinate objectives and stuff like that. We're getting into the draft now. I expect we're gonna see some very uh, high damage dealing DPS from Ash and Dark for us <laughs> on our They like to play the Kelpis, uh, Xil'jin, uh, Jaina, Fala. Uh, <laughs> Heroes that can definitely execute uh, mm -hmm. after a tank engage. There are some assassins like that you can just 100 to 0 all on your own, engage all on your own. But yeah, I think these four maps were banned yesterday too. I guess people just don't want to be playing on Alterac, Braxis. I don't remember if Garden was banned. Um, and I think they also played on Curse yesterday. You see Joe and Vala bands. And one thing interesting about this team, I used to play on Artemis, and Kala used to play with the folks uh, on the uh, On both Cosmos. sides. <laughs> yeah. On lot of, yeah, you've played with both, both sides, so yeah. we, we know the we know these both of these crews a little bit. I mean, you can tell me more about what, uh, what Cosmos maybe would be liking to play or how they play, but... I can't quite remember. I'm really only really familiar with the hero pools, about two of them. And, you know, who knows what roles they're playing. Like, I've noticed with NGS, like, people tend to start picking up new roles just because it's like, you know, you usually only have five or six people on a team. And it's like, mm -hmm. many people want to be damaged or many people want to be healers. So somebody's got a flex at some point. Yeah. And... For Artemis, they don't have their main healer on roster right now, so or he's on the roster, but he's not playing. Uh, we see Stukov is picked, and I even Dark picked Stukov, but it could be Dark or Ash or either. Mm -hmm. Probably anyone except Honestly. Presumably Honestly will be playing Tank, but even that, hard to say. I suspect um, we'll see a DPS or a healer tank. I mean, a healer pick here. Um, not sure. I know Diablo is a hero they tend to kind of play. Oh, we've got the Sylvanas and the Dahaka, which are both very good on this map. Yeah, those are scary picks. Um, Another you see them thing that's in the high level. <laughs> yeah, both of those. Yeah. One thing that's scary about picking Stukov this early is that you end up going cleanseless. Um, but yeah, you've got true. the gust, so there's sort of a disengage if you need it, and we take the Diablo. You love to see it. I think Diablo's okay to early pick. I know he can get yeah. countered a little bit, but mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to play a certain way, the Diablo, you can sort of flex the other picks around what you're doing with the Diablo, whether you're doing right. Lightning Breath or playing for the Apoc. So um, it's it's pretty decent. I, I agree though, the Stukov ban is, I think, more risky because there are a lot of Stukov ways to first deal. Pick. All right, yeah, the Stukov mm -hmm. first pick is more risky because there's, there's ways that you can deal with uh, yeah, you know, the silence. Yeah, as he's well. quite susceptible to dive. So let's say the Hakabura is behind Stukov. He doesn't have a lot of tools um, to peel for himself other than flailing swipe. Yep. And um, Diablo and Stukov, I don't generally see together mm -hmm. a ton. Uh, I feel like you see Stukov a lot more with other tanks like maybe Murad and Varian. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little harder to figure out where to put that silence pool on right, the Diablo. Exactly. Game, which can make it challenging. Um, but they do have a lot of point control uh, between the three picks oh, here. Oh, interesting. Oh. We see the Thrall and the Ana. All right. That's uh, 
Interesting. Oh. For sure. Deathwing. A very quick... We knew what we wanted to play. Deathwing and Mephisto. I see a few problems with Macro on the side of Artemis. It being a big map. Mm -hmm. Not the mm -hmm. best siege or wave clear. Um, but at the same time, Cosmo's uh, wave clear is also kind of so-so. Um, they have siege potential with Solana's, but I don't see Thrall as a siege character, so... Yeah, the half has got decent wave clear. Waiting on this tank pick, probably going to be something that like can mid. move the Diablo. Ooh, I was wondering, actually, about the Garrosh. Yeah, so... Uh, Garrosh... I mean, he's. I think he's decent into Diablo, although I, I don't think they have a ton of... I mean, they've got actually good damage follow-up, especially if they can land the tongue on top uh, from the throw, so this will be an interesting game. All right, I'm going to start For a sure. prediction. Yeah, and, Psych has been uh, asking about it, but we have to wait yeah, till the draft yeah. is over so that we can, you know, give our best guess. <laughs> our guesstimate. Who wins game one? Predict. Time to bet your lines. I, I think you can. Do you have channel points? No problem. You've got fortress synergy on the side of Cosmos. Oh, it's like a little starry dinosaur. I get it. For That's cute. Heroes. Oh, if I predict, I won't be able to choose the outcome. So can you choose the outcome at the end? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. All right, let me go ahead and introduce Cosmos. We've got Imbuement on that Garrosh, Odd Thought on the Ana, Dead On on the Sylvanas, Frostbite on the Thrall, and the Atlantis uh, on the seconds. Dehaka. And for Artemis, we have Groove Champ on Falstead, Five, Honestly on four, Diablo, T4 three, on Deathwing, Dark two, Horse on Stukov, and Ashkhan on Mephisto. Fight. This will be exciting for sure. Seeing all these players that I kind of know. Wow, and we've got actually W build quest on that all stack. Let's see how well he can stack that. See how much value he gets into that garage. Yeah, that's definitely going to be hard to stack if if he's landing into the Dahaka, because Dahaka can just burrow as soon as he presses them. But uh, we'll see. Uh, the Ash uh, Mephisto is a classic. Ash is a very good Mephisto player. Mm -hmm. Plays uh, definitely his 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 go-to, I would say, uh, and gets banned out a lot when they're playing his, uh, in NGS. So. so already we're seeing a very interesting split here. Ash just poking. We've got False Head soaking top. Nobody's been sent there yet. Deathwing was mid, cleared it really really fast, and got that prior to go bot. And uh, we do see the, that the red side macro has got a little lead. And I think between the two globals, they should have an okay time dealing with the uh, uh, Thrall, the Haka. In fact, I could see them, you know, maintaining that lead throughout the game, but we'll see. Cosmos getting an early start on the Siege, but not too much earlier. Um, another thing I want to point out is that Thrall went this Rolling Thunder which is percent damage. Um, of course, you want to take as much percent damage as you can in Diablo, and so that, that's going to be tough for him, because Thrall gets more percent damage. Yeah, true. You hear and a little so... doggy barking in the back? We've nicknamed him Illidan. <laughs> yeah. So I'm actually really surprised to see both of these teams on their camps immediately, like at the same time. Yeah, they're. I think they're just both playing very sort of standard and safe. Yeah, kind of by really the book here. Them. And like tanks anchoring mid. I, I definitely prefer to see a Garrosh team play a little more aggressively, especially mm -hmm. in the early game. That's when you yeah. can get that lead. You see actually getting a few tower shots. Nice flip by, honestly, in the mid lane. And I see a gank top, so it's actually Artemis that's using their uh, slightly earlier rotations to look for. Yeah, I, it looks like Artemis is finishing up their camps a little quicker. I noticed that, you know, with Wave Clear and Siege lacking at least early on the side of Cosmos, they're taking a little bit longer. Um, to get all that done. Yeah. And there. Uh, three v three men. Oh, a great on combo Diablo. onto Diablo with the sleep and what appears to be the anti heal. I didn't see the the um, icon for it, but he that was that was a really good pick. Yeah, that was a lot of damage. Like another get... throw onto the Mephisto. That's insane. Oh, sleep I think Sleep yeah, Dart does miss. 
And so these cans are crashing. We've got Volstead and Thrall kind of poking top here. Mm. But Bahaka... Diablo... Sorry. So as you said, Diablo's up, so they'll be able to fight off fight for this. In fact, Thrall's actually the only one here for now. He might actually just get caught. The Haka uh, and Garrosh are now here, and suit of getting flipped, but not stunned after the fact. He does get anti heal. Does kind of go down. Deathwing has just been sieging here, but I'm assuming the idea was just to stall here. Um, if they weren't going to send Deathwing. Um, yeah, which I think that they could have definitely taken a 5v5. In fact, it seemed like they, they might have had the advantage if they chose to go that route, but... They got quite uh, a bit of structure damage bought, though. That's almost half the port gone, so... No. Not a terrible trade here. No, they can't be too disappointed with the, with the outcome. Especially, like, these first tributes, they're completely irrelevant in terms of map presence. We see full Sleep Dark Ana. And we've got Auto Attack Diablo. Okay, interesting. A lot of unorthodox builds, I would say. <laughs> uh, and we also have spikes. Oh, so there's a flip uh, onto the Garrosh, but Garrosh is like, no, you! And then throws the Diablo back. A silence Pool doing a really great job of zoning. Definitely in the air currently, throwing some meteors down on the, uh, the trio <laughs> mid lane. Thrall already, level 7, takes another percent damage. So that's 15% health lifesteal. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it seems like Cosmos is not really uh, utilizing the potential of the Garrosh uh, as well as they could. It's so a lot of downtime, and I feel like that's where you want to be covering the rotations, hiding in those side bushes. You don't need to be showing mid all the time. You can have one person clear it at the wall. Mm -hmm. They already have people on the side lanes, but I mean, even just, we've already seen, like, Garrosh throws the Diablo, and just the Ana and the Sylvan, they had towers as well. But that's a lot of damage that they can deal. Uh, well, one thing that seems to be a point of conflict for what you're saying is that they're, they want to do their camps. They want to stay on top of macro. Sure. But it yeah. takes a little while. So knowing that they're kind of split, it seems like maybe he does, like the tank just doesn't want to um, go for, you know, picks when busy macro. So Thrall has to cover bot because Deathwing is like almost got the whole fort. Yeah, he and gets the he whole does, fort. Actually. And we're this actually boss seeing call this boss. Is definitely risky, but they do Super have tents not for long. Actually he's oh, gonna there's walk an in. ISO oh. onto the Diablo. Faltag gets thrown and slept. And they gust the whole team away. That's not a bad disengage Ooh. gust. Good that wailing arrow was huge. Wow. Garrosh actually looking for more, maybe getting a little greedy, but it looks like he's going to get away. Now Wrong they have to deal with this boss push. Here. Yeah, and this is not going to be a curse for either team. So, yeah. I, I was actually really surprised to see that Deathly got that full four. But again, Thrall being um, what is, you know, considered the role of the offlaner, does have a hard time uh, laning. Nice Sundering, actually going on the Stuke out here. Arc yeah. is gonna get it. These anti-heals are really good, too. Mm -hmm. And all that percent damage is gonna work really well against the Deathwing. It's a Decimate Garrosh as well. He's getting some value from it. Falset actually does go down, too. Getting a little cheeky with that. Positioning. And that's gonna be a tribute coming in for Cosmos, so... So for for ults, zero. We do see Nano Boost, Decimate, Isolation, Wailing Arrow, and Sundering. They're gonna get their own boss now. On the side of Artemis, we have Apocalypse, um, Wailing Swipe, Dolly Roar, Gust, Endurance. Yeah, they're, they've definitely got a lot of picking a lot of combo tools between the, the APOC and the Durance. I think they're they've got a game plan for how they want to engage in these fights. Uh, but it might be a little tricky between. The front line is going to be hard to to dive, and, and so is so is Syl. Um, but just we'll see how it looks in the future. Boss pushing bot lane. Mm -hmm. Gonna get some structure damage. And this tribute is sort of favoring Artemis, I want to say, because they have a, a fort to retreat to. But we'll see if they actually want to fight. Thirteens are going to be coming up pretty soon. 
and we see both, actually all three globals in the side lanes actually. Diablo getting on Diablo. Anti, anti healed as well. I'm it's... not sure if an anti heal ate the uh, ate the Q from Stukov or not, but might not have needed to. That's a lot of damage. These flips are super deadly because um, Stukov does have burst healing, but only so much. Mm. He's definitely stalling. Ash also be doing a great stall. Oh no! Oh, nice sleep dart. That's a really good sleep dart. Yeah, that's gonna be a dead Sukov, I believe. Yep, it's gonna go down. Deathwing's stalling, but sort of at what cost? Well, they've got, they've got, got some side lane value. Pressure. Yeah, they've got mid. Look, he's already jumping mid. Top is also pushing in. Mm -hmm. but... This tribute is gonna put a stop to the side lane push. They, they'd like to get that soak, but they're gonna instead go for bot for it. Try to get what they can get. Um, now enough. we're seeing the aggressive plays. They say, hey, those, those minions are just going to get the fourth. Just let's keep going. We can get more picks. And, and oh my ooh. goodness, that minion eats the throw. That's yeah, I look like the false head was in range there. Sundering actually catches the false head, pushes him through his own wall, which is pretty, pretty neat. The hawk is still behind this wall, but the towers are off. So it wasn't a huge threat. The team was all there, ready to back him up. Yeah, and without Falstead, they don't really have the single target damage they want to, who they would like to. I mean, really, a lot of it's coming from Stukov's low blow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good roots. So Curse is up for 14 more seconds. It looks like this keep might be, um, yeah. might that die. That here, but it's still a 5v4. They don't really want to fight this, but they're looking. Uh, not sure if they're going to commit, though. Those they still have like all of their art buttons up. They're even talent tiers. But the map is looking a lot more even now. Ballstead flying top. Getting a big wave pushing in. Both teams just chilling out, grabbing camps. Bruiser for Cosmos. And sort of, after all is said and done, it's pretty equal looking. Yeah, it's pretty even. <laughs> Almost <Yeah>. symmetrical. <laughs> yeah. Slight uh, XP lead for Artemis, and I want to say a slight structure lead for Cosmos. So um, a lot of it's going to come down to the next objective tribute um, and these bosses. You see, honestly, in that bush first, looking to get some poke damage on the garage. Oh, yeah. oh, Garrosh does end up popping the Indomitable. But it's quite a short cooldown, actually. Hot Black Arrow on the fort looking to dive the Deathwing? Maybe at least just. And they're the giving this fort and taking a cheeky boss. Yeah. They take bosses at, like, the most unexpected times. Well, I really like it. I mean, they have Gust up and a lot of ways to control this point. They also picked Swipe, too, which is another That's great true. point control. But so Garrosh has Indomitable, so. And Sylvanas has a non-stop, Dahaka can kind of burrow, so they've got a few tools to dodge all that, but at the same time, Artemis has a lot of tools to push them off. Yeah, it, it would be tough. Uh, my curse. The choice is and that being said, I don't think this boss is going to get a whole lot done. Maybe it gives them time for this tribute, though. Yeah, I think it's definitely going to buy them some time. The Haka is... He's looking to engage on the wall. Oh. Apoc is popped. Doesn't quite land, and Odyssey's getting chunked. Gets a flip on the Garrosh and a nice silence. Boston. Okay. Oh! Uh, the All Gus... Right. The Gus kind of saved them, I think. <laughs> I I was actually looking, because I saw the Gus. It's like, I could be good at this He could have if... pushed Garrosh, like, to the right, I think. And maybe um, that would have been a pick. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it was tough. I would say off the APOC, though. It's tough to find that kill after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The sleep charts have been really, really good. But, I mean, they, they got the tribute and they made that play. So, yeah. Um, said flew in, I think, after capping it, uh, which is. No, is I, a, I, they I think kept nice it just now. Piece. Oh, they kept it just now. Okay, yeah, okay. just now. 
Oh, so we've got the tank checking the bush, Ooh. but the whole team is on the other side of this wall. Yeah. That's a little bit of a loose rotation, I would say. Like, yeah. yes, they wanted to check boss and scout it, but... Iso missed. Gus is using disengage, but only hits one person, and now they're stuck in the middle of bot lane. Diablo did have soul, so he's That's on his way back. That's a decent swipe. Sunday misses the Stuka, but... If, if they can survive for, That's like, a, huge a few more... Durance. This on is a huge... Control. Huge counter engage, nice. Definitely uh, to... running away, <laughs> flying <laughs> all the way back there, but mid is getting some decent push in there. Yeah, I'm likely looking for this boss, which is oh my goodness, is very aggressive. But no I mean, way I mean they don't... <laughs> it should be theirs. This is so <laughs> crazy. I mean, yeah, Garrosh is dead, but that's so wild. That's uh, how many bosses so far? Three or four? Um, they got theirs at least twice, and then they got this one. Probably at least just three. three. Um, Honestly, they, I'm they I'm, I'm pretty blown. chuffed with this yeah. Deathwing play. I think he's been doing a really great job as an offlaner on a big map, despite Deathwing not being like, you know. Quick to rotate between lanes, though he yeah, is I mean, global. He's crushing the siege and so. Yeah. So that does something. Absolutely. Um, Luke gets a root onto Stukov Diablo. Garrosh looks to get a throw over the wall, doesn't quite find it. Gonna have to play to just kill this boss for now. Ash. Also, fair to, safe to say, the scaling looks a lot better for Artemis in the late game. Between, like, where they get level 20 yeah. gusts. Because Garrosh. He is a really strong hero early game. I I can't say the same of later game. Uh, and Mephisto is definitely a hero that is super, super strong late game. Oh, Diablo getting rooted. Really good disengage gust. Yep. And they guess they don't Oh really my goodness, well. they're getting so much damage. They just ate it. They were all walking in the same spot. Wow. That was insane amount of damage. Is he Yeah. Cool? He is Molten Flame build. Okay, it's Molten Flame build, okay. That was so cool. And Thrall did get left behind. He gets picked off. Everybody's still a little low. They have tap. Yeah, what they're is gonna, gonna do with this? They have a curse and a 5v4. That's okay. that's like so all you could have. going over there, yeah. I mean, I don't think they end, but I think they get at least two keys. At least a key. So Garrosh is coming in on the flank here. Yeah, oh, but who's who's flanking who? The Honestly, is looking oh, for that's him. Actually, a nice. Six root and a Hellgate onto the Sylvanas. Do they Gets clinch the kill the though? Cube. Okay, Ooh. they clinch the kill. Diablo does end up dying, but yeah, kind of a one for one. Except but Diablo, Diablo has souls, ah. so <laughs> Diablo is coming right back. I think they should be probably even rotating aggressively here on this keep. Yeah, it looks like Deathwing is saying, hey, they're still two down. We're yeah, not they have, leaving. They have no damage. Both of the damage dealers are currently dead. No Thrall, no Solanus, so there's no threat here. Yeah. Thrall with the Root Thunder. and the Sunder. False are getting tongued in the middle of barrel roll. Good disengage, Gus. Great flaming oh. swipe. He dies to the core! <laughs> but Garrosh, Garrosh goes down now. Yeah, Garrosh helping to clinch the kill, but also Actually dies. Actually getting cut Ash. left behind here. Yeah, Unfortunate. A and now it's a, a, a weird 4v3 situation, <laughs> but a lot of this is just going to be spent, I'm sure. Artemis getting camps and Cosmos pushing their lanes out. It looks like they're going for boss again. They don't have a guts. They don't even have this play. This is the game up. of bosses. This I is mean, illegal. Deathwing has really great point control, but yeah, I would also this say is this is so illegal, illegal. Being two people down. <laughs> what? Okay, so they do get kicked off, but nobody dies, so no harm, no That's foul. That's really. amazing that nobody dies there. <laughs> Yeah. Like, they went uh, straight to it, too. Yeah, and they can get this boss, I think, and then defend for in time. Maybe they lose a little shield? Nah, they're not going to lose any shields. Mm, yeah, probably not. Another minion wave just spawned. Garrosh is going to be back up. 
You can throw those katas right into the core. <laughs> yeah. So Cosmos picks up Artemis' boss. Yeah. So it looks like we are going to get a 5v5 at some point in this game with 20s. And Artemis' 20s are sort of objectively better, I want to say. Like, you don't... I mean, for all Anna... I Garage. have a hard time understanding which target is going to get Nano. I assume it's Silver Thrall. Um, Thrall could go really hard with all the percent damage that he has. Think of the Decimates. Think of the value. Oh, this is true. <laughs> Top down Garrosh. They have Contagion, which is huge. But Gust is so good. Like, you have their whole team on you. Just, oh, just Dark is walking away. into the... Garrosh is gonna be a pick. They're gonna count. Oh gauge. no! Gonna look... Wow! Good that dust. is Good so dust. insane! The flaming swipe saves him. Garrosh ends up falling. Honestly, falling so too. Honestly. With no souls. But this is exactly the kind of place Ooh. Deathwing wants to fight in. Yeah, and Mephisto. Like, yeah. They're, they're happy to take a fight there. Man, bloody stuff. Mm hmm. Was that a and... faith check by the healer into the bush? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> oh no. Uh... Yeah, one thing I noticed earlier is that when Honestly walked into this middle bush that I'm looking at right here, which is right by Cosmo's boss, um, like, their team has been checking bushes. Like, they understood where the other team was, but they're not using their ranged abilities for vision, which is super dangerous. Yeah, they, they need to be throwing the lobster in, throwing a Q. Yeah, exactly. Diablo. Just check check it Pulse a little safe. Pulse Fed, Mephisto, like... It's a garage. Unless you're in melee range, you can't really do anything to you. So, so they did gonna... get that camp that's going to be some more pressure if they end up contesting this boss. Which is what it looks like they're doing. <laughs> they really like the bosses on this map. <laughs> I think more teams should play as boss heavy as those. When, <laughs> when you have these characters, right? You have yeah. Gus. They have amazing gusts. point control, that is true. But the CC on the side of Cosmos is kind of crazy. Are they gonna? Okay, so they're gonna engage hung. Dark off the of sleep. Decimate's getting a lot of value. Apoc oh, comes the out. Gus pushes Thrall and Ana away, and Sylvanas is stuck in it. So Garrosh is just here fighting, kind of like. 2v5, he's got yeah. 40 health, 50! There's no way Sylvanas oh, falls goodness. to that Deathwing. Durance lands on Dahaka, gonna finish him off. And it looks like Artemis should be able to end the game off this. That's three for zero. So You uh, never know. I imagine they're gonna be you saying never know. go for it. I think I've seen them lose with 2% once. Who hasn't lost with 2% <laughs> Let's be That's what I'm saying, you never know with HOTS. <laughs> like, yeah, so they are going to be going for the core. Garrosh and Anna are going to try their best, but I don't think it's going to do anything. Uh, we see even Stukov is hitting it. Nano decimate Garrosh! Oh, but no, he's going to go to level 20! He's but he's do doing it. it! He's oh, doing he it! Oh, he doesn't have Okay! Yeah, no. He's doing it! <laughs> okay! Look at him! He's Wait, doing it! it. <laughs> oh, but the Gus, that ends the game for sure. Dude, okay. that Garrosh is going so hard! <laughs> He's doing it. Alright, so game one goes to Artemis. I kind of hope we see three games here. This is this is kind of a spicy matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just from this game, it seemed pretty even. I feel like both, yeah. both games were very similar pace. Mm -hmm. So, um, Garrosh was tough damn in the end. No way! Oh my yeah. god, that, I love it. You love to see it. Yeah. All right, you're gonna have to settle that prediction. I can't. Oh yes, that's right. Manage prediction. Choose the outcome. Wow, a lot of points getting bet here. Looks like two people voted 1k points on Artemis, and two people voted 4.1k on Cosmos. Oh, give me my point. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, uh limes. Sorry. Limes. Oh, limes. We see Deathwing with that top down. That Deathwing was popping off. He did not die a single time. Got amazing soak, amazing siege damage. Top down. It was very nice. And there were some good disengaged gusts that game. These Thunderings just barely didn't kill Stukov, like at least twice. 
But they were... They were really good, though. Yeah. Yeah, there were some good disengage gusts. Uh, some engages were a little wonky. Uh, coordination is hard mm -hmm. when you have so many big R buttons that you want to mm -hmm. be able to yeah. you know, displace and stun your enemy. But uh, those, those decents. I think, uh, I think that we did see a little bit of a late game draft difference mm -hmm. uh, in the end. Sure. But it was definitely playable on both sides. Just depends on the engage. The Ana had amazing heals, doing 20,000 more than Stukov, but also not dying ever. Alright. Waiting on the second lobby. We have no idea what map it's going to be. And that map was picked by Artemis. So the second map should be picked by Cosmos, and we're going to Towers of Doom. All right. What did you think about Decimate that game? Do you think it was a better pick than Taunt? Oh, that's a tough one. Because, like, damage reduction is cool, but I don't I don't know if you can damage reduct the Deathwing. Um, I think you can? I'm actually not sure. But I think Taunt might have been good to pin down the Stukov pin down the Falstad. It seemed like Stukov was kind of getting away um, with some things. <laughs> so, maybe Taunt could have been useful there, too. Yeah, I did say we were going to Towers of Doom. <laughs> Hope we see some more spicy drafts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Where's our the Lost Vikings? Where's our TLV? I don't know. TLV's kind of. I want an Abathur. I'm in my Abathur arc. <laughs> Wait, where did the little map thingies go? Why are my maps gone? <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's okay. Alright, I'm gonna say caster's ready. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Get into the draft. Well, if we ever do see a TLV, this is the map. This is the map. You think so? Happen. You think it's not like yeah. Sky Temple or like so Volskaya or Towers? Is such a good. I would say Towers <laughs> is the best map. I personally, well, in my opinion, it's the second best behind Dragonshire. But oh, Dragonshire, that's another good one. It's so good to be able to soak a little bit more freely on top of having potential uh, point pressure on on all the map and just like yeah, the but way... you have to have like three brains. No, just one brain. I don't know. <laughs> no, I have yet to confirm this is, this is... how many brains it takes to play the Lost Vikings. That's the kind of anti-Viking stigma that I hear in the community. Oh my goodness. Keeping people from playing TLD. Well, I'm just saying, I tried the Lost Vikings last week, and I had a really bad time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we oh, missed no. the first ban. Unfortunate. Maybe they were discussing it. Um, maybe the hat is on the wrong person. Like, I don't know. Yeah, we'll see if we see a remake or maybe they'll say it in chat so i actually don't have the draft chat turned on if you do um i do not okay well maybe we'll remake it <laughs> or maybe it'll be banned and they just type it and we won't see whatever they banned <laughs> yeah okay frequently, looks like they're uh... continuing yeah frequently we see people just say it in chat yeah it's on our system sort yeah. of thing it would be pretty 
strange to like say, oh, we ban Rainer in chat, and then the other team. <laughs> well, it, at that point, you just leave and remake it, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. you're not forcing people to play against something that they verbally ban. For the ball of ban. Yeah, which they banned last one as well. The Ando in first pick, alright. That's a good first pick. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what do you, you can't say, like, he's just insane and there's no count. It's too much utility. Follow-up CC, slight burst healing, mm -hmm. stun ult, Combo which starter, everybody yeah. loves, whole Suga variant. What, what do they call this? Training wheels? <laughs> Training wheels. <laughs> a little. There is yeah. nothing wrong with it. It is insane CC. Yeah, it's really annoying to deal with. And you get it so early on. Level mm -hmm. 4, all of a sudden, you yeah. start blowing people up. Yeah, you got low blow already, level 1. Level 4, you got taunt. Game over. Stitches! Oh. Okay. Kelpops. These are looking like some more classic Artemis picks. <laughs> yeah. Gonna see some... Uh, they got good follow-up for the hooks, and they've obviously got, uh, you know, Anduin pairs pretty well with Stitches. Bullet Gorge. It's also just a good pick away, because Anduin counters Stitches as well. So... Oh, the, the Death, death Ring respect, man. man. Yep, complete respect. I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. So, offlaners that I expect to see on this map are, again, like the Haka, essentially Leora. People like to play Zul, just for the wave clear. I uh, see and Malthale, then... Blaze. Yeah, Blaze, Malthale. Um, I think Urel is actually pretty decent on towers. Mm -hmm. So, um, those would well, be... Well, we're not going to see Blaze. <laughs> but the, you definitely want someone who can well it depends on how you actually choose to rotate you, you don't need to someone to double soak but that's how the map tends to play out especially in the mid, mid divs so, yeah, Zool. <laughs> people just like zul here i don't I even like really zul know here i love zul <laughs> yeah. here well because he has like the fastest wave clear for an offlane you get that prio you know you want to join the foreman and invade the camp like yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anybody with faster wave play than Zul early game. But yeah, I could be wrong. No, his wave too is insane. So Leora. Ooh, Leora. And then we okay. have the false set again. This kind of looks like maybe they're going to hook Gorge Gus. When I think of, like, the difference between Zul and Leoric, like, yeah, Zul's clear is better than Leoric's, and we'll have a little bit of prio throughout the early mid-game. Yeah. But Leoric's His team fight presence way is better. way better. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, Zul's Poison Nova can can do some crazy damage. I, I Yeah, I think Poison Nova is an underrated ult. I mean, people really actually is. frequently go the other one. I get for, for the slow, yeah. I mean, I kind of get it, like... You want to contribute, right? But like Poison Nova, you can kind of just dodge it. But it really depends on where you are when you do it. It's not always like dodgeable. Is that a word? <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if you are dodging it, it's kind of like a CC in and of itself. Like if you have to position yourself around it. But yeah. So this is say... definitely interesting. You do have a lot of bursts, primarily me. Yeah, for sure. But they get a taunt, they can just kill any one of them. So they, they've got yeah. pull, and, and then once pull is not there, the, whoever gets taunted is just going to die. In theory, they're just going to die. So. Don't forget to do our prediction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, I'll battle. introduce Cosmark again. Um, let's see, we've got Atlantis on that Zool, dead on on the Graymane. Uh, Odd Thought on the Stukov, Imbument on the Variant, and Frostbite on the Leaming. <laughs> For Artemis, we've got our Beast Epping Dance Party. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Okay. We've got Groove Champ on the all set again. 
honestly on the stitches Five, dark horse on the four, anduin uh, t core on the the orc and ashcon on the begin. oh we see the w build all stat again and i don't think there's too much to say about the drafts as to who has the advantage because the way that they've picked it, it's, I think it's all going to come down to do they get hooks? Yeah. Does and either do side, hooks? yeah, follow up on the tank? Because yeah. they've got a lot, both sides have a lot of kill pressure, and the kill pressure is coming in different ways. Um, obviously, I, I say obviously, but I, in my opinion, I feel like Cosmos' straight up team fight is significantly better. Um, even despite the right. solely art. You're always but... relying so much on that hook from the stitches, but that was a really yeah. nice hook, actually. Yep. Dead on getting quite low. Yep. And we do see a W build fall set once again. I wonder yeah. if this is just a uh, comfort talent he likes to go W build. But... I love seeing these hooks getting thrown on cooldown this early in the game. Um... So honestly looking to kind of poke around because Varian's not level 4 yet, so he doesn't have that extra health and he doesn't have taunt, which is like the only hard CC they really have other than Zulu. Oh, so they are looking to invade. I do like this call. And we've got, got the silence there. on the point with low blow. Honestly gonna die, but uh, imbuement as well. Tank trade. And no doubt they did that because they had Liar closer and... Um, you know, Varian's not level 4, so he's very, yeah, very squish. fragile. Um, but actually, they did lose a bit of soap for that, because yeah, Leo was did. behind. He was just mid because he was behind. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, all in all, I think that you're not too disappointed with his outcome as, uh, as Cosmos. With Zul, not only do you have faster wave clear, but you have actual wave <laughs> with his trait of spawning the little skeletal warriors. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that was an insane jump! Talk Not sure the orb that. connected, but that that was very dangerous. <laughs> and I think that Artemis is going to need to help Liara cover these waves, because we're already seeing Soak being missed on both sides a little bit, um, just because of the difference in the wave, wave clear speed, but... Um, not that it's a big deal, but they're going to lose a little bit that way. Taunts onto Stitches, Silence as well. Grandmate jumps in. But they Ooh. can't really burst them just yet. Crazy sidestep. So we've got um, both of the four mans fighting for that ball alt bot altar. Leoric taking his a little earlier than two. May have that prior. Oh. Stitches getting caught in a big slow in CC. Yeah. Artemis not yeah. quite backing off just yet. But I'm sure that they're not going to try to delay this too much longer. If they right. do, they will die. Zul so. does have that priority mid. Um, yeah. Should they take a team bite? And I think Artemis kind of, you know, obviously they didn't want to die there. But this kind of makes it harder for the offlane as well. Because now there's the offlaners aren't coming to match for the team fight. Which means they're just going to lose more in that side lane. So like, Zul just gets to keep staying. Top Huge lane. hook on the leaming. Amazing follow-up route from that Anduin. Right under the towers. Yep. And Leoric is actually rotating here. I mean, it's not like he has a tomb. There's no tens yet. But... Oh, okay. So he's got the drain. Yep. Those are some really great early game kills. Mm -hmm. We've already got two chest size stacks on that Andy. He's doing great. Artemis going to use those two kills to get their sapper a little faster. Stitches covering the mid wave. I I don't play a ton of leaming, but I am a little surprised to see her going calamity. Um, I feel like I feel like jumping into the enemy team is a little difficult. But you know, a lot of people will just take this build for like the ultimate reset value. You know, you wave a force calamity, like. You just keep going. I want to say that Sapper Camp Top is so greedy. If Leoric knew what was going on, <laughs> no way he gets that. But they do get it. Unfortunate. Oh, yeah. So he'll have enough time to rotate as well. So, um, 
that Stamper is going to get some amount of value, but they're, they're actually missing Soak mid. Nobody's covering it. But we've got a 4v5 down here. A hook Ooh. on the Stukov. Follow up Gravity Laps from the KT. They're doing a really great job of following yeah. up on these picks. And so now and this me. should be the altar for Arcus. And that's that's all they need to do, and this is before the thirteen hook, so it's kind of kind of great. Yeah. That they're yeah. To get these kills. And we're seeing already a level lead as well as uh, well as equal points, but. Um, uh oh, Varian's kind of waiting this push. He probably makes it out here, but it's getting a lot of damage as you see. So we see tens coming out for Artemis. We got mm -hmm. Gorge. The instant Gorge pick. Yeah. <laughs> what else is there? So Zul and Leora are kind of brawling out in the top here. Generally, you don't want to brawl with Zul. Oh, the stick and two wow. with the dream life! That should be enough, I think. Yep. That was a really, Still really a great entomb. I don't even know if And there's if a Gorge they... under the Grey Mane on bot lane. Okay. Oh, the silence was a little, uh... Okay, oh, and the they finish pump. him off. Finisher. Catches hey. actually the variant as well. Uh, they have the oh, roots. The I don't know if they have another gravity lapse. Almost, maybe. Variant's quite tanky. The pyro lapse. And there's no protected quite yet. Yeah. Yep, but it's that not 10. That does land the kill. Can't parry that. Yeah, this this game is starting to look really good for Artemis. Right. But um, once 10s get online for Cosmos, they'll definitely have a lot of opportunities to try and equalize this XP lead. They will have to kill this fort, because um, Artemis will be taking it here. Um, probably going to have to give this altar, because they're just going to need to spend some time focusing on getting the map all right. But they can take a... Well, maybe this this might be their only chance to take an even talent-tiered fight. So we'll be interested it's to see It's really hard do. to go for this altar, though, having both of those forts um, belong to Artemis. Like, there's nowhere safe to run. So they do opt to just give it, huh. and here they're just deciding to push. I don't like this. Why not? Well, they're gonna get it, but this isn't gonna help them equalize XP very much, and they get all these sapper pressure bot lane, which is like where where the points are just gonna start flowing in for Artemis. I mean, are they even gonna get back in time to stop these points? Uh, maybe? Like the oh, they stopped backing. Really? They're just gonna let. Oh, they're gonna through. rotate on the mid. They're looking to try to flank, but they're a little too slow, I think. Oh, this like is a kill. Out. Unless the gust is in time. I guess. I mean, that was six sappers that just came through bottom. So I don't think that was worth the fort cap pop. But well, it's anybody's game on Towers of Doom. True. And Artemis is going to take the port while Bob is being recapped by Husbands. Nice. I like. I think the rotations from from Artemis' team have been very smart, and honestly, it's been sort of commanding the team movement, um, making a lot of aggressive plays, some interesting camp invades, and it's been working out for them really. So, pretty nice. Good stuff. Leoric taking some time to clear. Regain bot for it. Get a hook onto Varian. Oh, oh. The gorge. there's they no are, gust they for used... two seconds. Okay, they great used life bomb. Lines. And there's the gust disengaged, but ball side getting pretty low. And Leoric was actually top for just a bit. They still have level 13, but a lot of Arbon trees on both sides. I gotta say, that's a classic moment when you don't know if they're gonna gorge and you throw your stun out and they just get gorged. <laughs> and your stun just fades into the air. Oh no! Dark Horse getting caught ha out here is actually gonna be okay. Pyro yeah, lost Pyro on Pyro definitely kills that Zul. He has 70 health at the end of it. <laughs> Value. Yeah. Talent to your advantage made that fight kind of tricky. Hook Catches the leaning. Root. Root. See, she does get rooted. That's insane. Even after teleporting. Looks like we got a counter kill here though. False said Eden, so he just dies to the Grey Mane swipes. Makes it still a 4 Still out number, yeah, that's correct. It just does have that level 13 hook now. But both but, alters are up. Are they gonna let them have mid? Are they gonna trade one for one? 
I think they could dive onto Ash here. Get some nice gravity laps though, keeping him alive. Do dive onto the honestly as well, but they so can't all coming through. in, misses the drain, but Light Bomb and Entomb dead on, going for that KT, nice. but he gets gorged. Yeah, gets gorged. And He's Leoric is happy to there. just make space on the side of the fight over there. Man. I gotta say, things are just not going Cosmo's way this game. I feel like they've been trying to find ways to get these kills and equalize that XP. Um, I like the, I like that they are all committing to the calls. Uh, and a lot of the calls are going very well for them, but... It just seems like a lot of these fights, one bad hook, and all of a sudden they're really on the back, bad, back right. foot. Like, that's just... Do you think that means they need to play more aggressive? They need to just start dodging hooks? Like, what can they do better? That's a good question. I mean, I like this. They're diving onto the stitches, and I think they will get this kill. Ooh, good pull. Oh, but uh, the and the fire oh, oh, no. And he doesn't, he can't even pop his uh, bio switch. Damn, I don't even think it would have been enough, but... I mean, that's crazy that they don't kill with Stitches there. He was under tower, rooted, silence. Oh, Gorge oh. onto the Zool! Really great light bomb timing. I can never get yeah. that right. <laughs> Wasn't necessary, but it was good timing. Yeah. I mean, might as well... Oh, Another no! Oh, and Stu got going to gust. silence, but gets the gust. Yeah. Man, okay, Artemis is playing swipe. this... Artemis tried a, a hook um, forge comp the last NGS match, and if things were looking a little shaky for them. They were yeah. not really able to isolate targets after the, the gorge, but this game's looking a lot different. It looks they like they're ready to try it again. After kill. Oh! oh. <laughs> All right. What? I mean, Man. I knew I could do that. And now it's three altars. Are they? Do they have the potential? To, I mean, they definitely have potential to, to end here. That's 15 points if they cap all three. So I think and the fact honestly is looking gets the Stukov. No I think Gordon the fact up that they yet. they picked Anduin and then into Varian has made it really hard for Cosmos because you know they have that single target. They want the blow up, but yeah. Cole is just denying it. Ooh, another good gust. Really yeah. good isolating yeah. gusts. Absolutely. And even though they don't get the Zul kill, I mean, this is great for them. Oh my goodness. He's looking for the pyro. He's stepping up. Yeah, tomb a little wide. Oh my Bot goodness. Side. They okay, catch the, the grave. Comes out. These. Oh, Ooh. the light bomb just shy, but they still kill him. They have enough damage. Yeah. Meanwhile, Leoric is two, 1v2-ing bot lane. I think that this is going to spell the end for this game. Artemis blocking the orb, getting the altar channel, getting another hook, and that's going to be it. GG, Artemis takes the series 2-0. to zero. Wow. That was an insanely clean game by Artemis. But I think that it also has to do with being cognizant of the stitches. Like, for example, when they got um, a hook bot lane after already losing someone, I think, um, you know, they were just kind of standing in the lane, right? Not, not, I don't believe that this person that was in the lane had vision of the enemy team, and it's one thing you just be cognizant of, you know, hide in your minions, like if you're playing against the stitches, right? So, yeah, you have to be paranoid basically, you have to play <laughs> paranoid. Cognizant if you don't is the word I use, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's that's how I feel when I play too. Because, like, if you don't see the stitches, just assume that wherever is the worst possible place a hook could come out right now, that's where it's gonna come from, you know, right? So, right. Uh, unless you know where he is for sure. And honestly, really landing those hooks this game. So, you know, they, they played that that very well. Yeah, definitely landed the hooks. It kind of seemed like he was on fire. And those light bombs, the root follow up, very, very clean. Like, it's obvious that these two players have been playing together for a while. Yeah. So let's see if we'll get an interview on, uh, let's see. Let's see, let's 
I'm telling him it's not a question. <laughs> Yo, he asked me for the interview. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> okay, um... Do you want an invite or do you want to go into like a different lobby or you want to go to the NGS lobby? Uh, I'll just follow you wherever you want to go. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to lobby uh, one, I guess. Okay. Hey. 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 Good games. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Very nice. Very nicely done. Whole gang in here. Yeah, oh, I said send well, everyone. We're we're all coming. <laughs> <We're that. laughs> You're missing one. <laughs> nice. Are his punchy, well, punchy boys punching him right now? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta get beat up by your kids. <laughs> oh, good games, guys. How did that? How did yeah. that series feel? Um, much uh, better than the last one. <laughs> I don't like playing healer. I'm always scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seemed like, especially in that first game, they were really on you. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you were like the main target focus, it appeared. Um, I'm scared for you. everybody else when I'm healer. I'm just <laughs> oh. Too many nerves. That too. <laughs> it's like, don't put in there! Please! <laughs> <laughs> Usually I kill me not everybody else <laughs> <laughs> we strategically had stuke on face check camps to see oh yeah we yeah we didn't talk about that at all don't worry <laughs> <laughs> yeah we didn't kill up in the cast don't rewatch it just enough. it was the, it was the perfect date they never we almost coming. we almost won that fight though i know yeah, i mean the call was that they were on their camps so i thought they'd gone didn't you survive so when you face check like, he did, did survive. Yeah. I, died. I died. <laughs> I, I, I died. I died for you. Thing. It's the opposite bright wing effect, where your healer is <laughs> way out there. You send the tank in to trade. Yeah, that was. That was really the only time. <laughs> only time I hit an apoc that whole game. <laughs> Those sleep darts were really, really good, though. So, they were on point. They yeah. they really messed with anything I tried to do. Yeah. Yeah. Never get sleep. Until there's a dragon on your face, and you're like, sleep <laughs> Oh my gosh, there was one crazy moment in that first game where they were all walking in a group, and you had that molten flame, like, and you yeah. were scared. Oh. That was insane. Oh. <laughs> I was shouting over comms. I was like, we're turning it now. We're turning! <laughs> Got a good flame. The exact comms were, I like this joke. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen a Deathwing do that much damage in a half a second. <laughs> The, the damage scales up exponentially with the number of targets, not linearly. Oh, really? Yes. Interesting. They start exploding on each other after 16. Wow. Beautiful. That's what happened. It happened so fast. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like that first game was pretty chaotic in those team fights. Like, you guys had so many big R buttons that sometimes they were being used in counterproductive ways. Uh, but uh, it... It felt like towards the late game, you guys really scaled, and the Ash, Ash was doing so much damage too in those fights. So. Yeah, they. I was calling APOC engages, and uh, they did a really good job at sleeping or throwing or doing anything that would interrupt everything I was trying to do, and then that just kind of devolved into chaos. So, you know, really good play by them, a hundred percent. The Garrosh is also eating a lot of Durances with the Unstop, too. And making the it hard to... Yeah, he was doing a yeah. great job healing for his team. Yeah, yeah it, was, it, was, it was great all around. That one really could have went either way. Yeah. At the end, too, it looked like the Garrosh might be able to, yeah. with, with just a Nano, pull off a, a core save. But... I think if he potentially goes Decimate level 20, like he might, he might pull that off. <laughs> but the double throw into the stun was really good, too, making you guys take four damage, but... You guys pulled it off. That's awesome. And you guys played a uh, a gorge uh, a gorge build last NGS match. Yeah. Um, it felt like this this time around. You guys had a lot yeah. of synergy in, in it was your isolating game. targets, uh, usage <laughs> of the gusts. There's a, re a lot of really good disengaging gusts this game. I gotta say, especially towards the end. Do you so. think the light bomb ever made the difference on the gorge, or was that overkill? Not that um, I'm complaining. Come on. <laughs> I, I think it it definitely it absolutely did helps. on the gray main bottom lane. Yeah. When I, put it on, I think it, it was on the orc, right? He was almost away. Oh, you got a last hit with the light bomb, yeah. 
Oh yeah, yeah. On, on the on the false set, I think. At the very yeah. end when Zul just got dumped in the fort and like <laughs> pumped one, on top that of that. Might have, that one might have been overkill. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you're gonna want to be using it behind the fort. on the same cooldown, anyways, right? Like, you might as well. Plus, they don't have like an Anduin. You took the Anduin away, which is uh, honestly like forget the light bomb. The Anduin takeaway from the <laughs> gorge is really key. We learned our lesson last week from Anduin against it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, when you had that Jaina just whoop right out. Yeah, we, we 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 learned to first pick it so they can't take it away from <laughs> us. Uh, well, that was a mistake. I still think game. they were making me first pick because they didn't trust in my healer pool, but <laughs> that's a, a separate com conversation. <laughs> were you guys watching the first to ten um, Leo solo kill on Zul top lane? Yes. Yeah, that was <laughs> so fine. sick and too. Like, he had nowhere to go. <laughs> that was good. Yeah. I was not watching And it. one thing I noticed is that, like, Azul, like, your wave players faster, you're doing the camps, right? You usually have better prio, but you don't want to be brawling. That's where you, you falter in the 1v1s in the offlane, right? But he did end up brawling you and you, you won, so. Yeah. There was a moment top lane where Zul was desperately hoping that you wouldn't scout him doing camp. <laughs> <laughs> and he got away with it, but. He did. Uh, but you ended guys. up rotating yeah and winning them team fights a lot too so yeah well i was got in trouble going for the overly good gust that just sends the whole team into us that you can get away with in quick match <laughs> <laughs> i had to go yeah, for the we, less flashy effective ones we felt like wait we uh, played now. together a lot better this week Hopefully yeah we can keep building on that the other team played really well too so getting a 2-0 was a was a good win against good team yeah, I think, um, let's see, they are Cosmos. This is their first match. So I think that after watching this game, they'll probably improve, have tighter cons, you know, think more about their cons and their strengths and whatnot. Um, and we'll see them improve later on the season. So I wanted to well, know how your guys' game went, uh, you know, uh, last week. And then you just, you really, really came back <laughs> this week. Or... Was it already this past week? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it goes quick, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, um, we 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 went into the game this time. We had a, a clear draft strategy, um, and then we just we focused on comms. Like that was the the biggest thing that that mm -hmm. hurt us last week. Is we were we were a little disjointed in our calls and what we wanted to do, and so we were a lot better at, at talking and getting our camp timings, and it it helped. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Props to Cosmos, though. They put in a lot of time over the off season. They did. They did. Very good team. Bunch of good guys. It's a yeah. uh, fun group to play with. So best of luck to them. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys had some strong wins, but I could totally see if it, when you get that rematch, they, they seem yeah. like a formidable team. Yeah. It's oh, a pretty good match for you guys. Skill wise, yeah. 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 100%. They're going to do good things this season. They need to rotate in that Mediv. It was scaring me in draft. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait, so we weren't able to see what were they banning when they okay, missed the ban? The mystery ban. Diva. Diva. Uh, yeah. Diva. Okay, interesting. Diva ban. I think <laughs> that's what we played on ours last week, isn't it? Or yes. Is that a scrim game? I can't remember. That was a scrim story. game. Oh. Yeah. We Did you scrim them? We played yes. Diva on Towers. Somehow they must have known Deep that. Scouting. <laughs> <laughs> They're in your comms. And at the end of the game, I remember saying, I am never going to draft D.Va on Towers in right wing. <laughs> it was just, it was horrible. It's okay, we banned right wing. Once we banned yeah. right wing, they knew the, the D.Va Diva was an option. She loves it. LPGs, guys. Yeah. Call it you have any. I don't, I don't. It's, it's good to see everybody still playing. <laughs> um, we love casting you guys. Joe Tyke is especially excited to cast you guys. So yeah, yeah, good to see you guys. Well, thanks. We appreciate. Uh, we yes. Like the insight from the best healer and the best offlaner. <laughs> <laughs> Ariel offlane. Yes. I, I wasn't. 
<laughs> Despite contrary belief or contrary to popular belief, I wasn't talking about Joe Tack with both of those. It was you were people. It's fine. That Oriole offlane is the best dealer and best offlaner we know. He does that's have the, the best Oriole offlane. Uh, uh, like I can't compete. I see how it could have come off now, but that's not what I meant. <laughs> He's just too good. Well, I mean, you guys are welcome to make shoutouts, uh, if you'd like. Yeah, just shout out to the team. Uh, worked on our comms a little bit in the scrims this week, and it definitely paid off. And then, uh, shout out to Ash jumping in with us this week. Uh, he is on our roster, but he's in a little bit more of a sub role now, as mm -hmm. opposed to he used to play with us all the time. So yeah. jumping in, filling in when Seven can't be there. And yeah. Just awesome. killing it on his normal hero pool. Yeah. So he did awesome. Nice, nice. Shout out to my old team, uh, Free Hong Kong over in the <laughs> East. I hope we see him in the finals. That'd be so yeah, much fun. That would be a lot I of fun. I remember that team. Yeah, I, I hope you guys are able to have a really great season as well. Mm -hmm. Uh oh, don't say that on a Blizzard game. <gasps> uh, we gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, Thanks for the cast. Yeah, Shout outs to everybody. Yeah, have a great evening. You both as well. <laughs>